As the Ukraine crisis continued to dominate world headlines, delegations at CSW 66 quietly continued their work in strengthening the nexus between women's equality and empowerment and climate change and disaster reduction policies and programs. We know that women are disproportionately affected by climate change, environmental crisis and natural disasters. Notwithstanding this, we also see evidence all over the world that women are agents of change at all levels. Our agreed conclusions, therefore, urge us to do more to integrate gender perspectives in all these areas, using, amongst others, our domestic laws and policies. CSW 66 has also reminded us that when we put women in leadership, we are not doing them a favor, but it is for the benefit of all. Among the agreed conclusions, the Commission decided to promote women's and girls' full and equal participation and leadership in the natural resource environment, to expand gender response finance at scale for climate and environment action, to build women's resilience in the context of agricultural and food systems, and enhancing gender statistics in the gender environment nexus. The COVID-19 pandemic had laid bare existing inequalities, including on unpaid care work. The agreed conclusions elevate the importance of building women's resilience and addressing the unequal sharing of caregiving. Finally, the Commission at this session has committed to strengthening gender-responsive climate finance. This is critical to advance the global climate and environment action agenda, as well as to increase resources for the multitude of women's organizations, enterprises and cooperatives that are protecting the planet. Officials here calling this session of vital moment towards the COP27 meeting in Africa, Egypt, specifically later this year. CSW 66 has implored us to focus with more determination on building the resilience of women to withstand the challenges as identified in the priority theme. In key sectors such as education, agriculture, energy, the just transition, the world of work, we need to deliberately build in gender-sensitive approaches. Some of our countries already practice gender-responsive budgeting and finance. I am pleased that we use CSW 66 to share best practices and learn from each other. Climate finance should have, be, should have a clear gender lens, as women are critical actors in both adaptation and mitigation. And a nod to South Africa's leadership role. This is indeed a historic moment. Thank you, Ambassador Matu of South Africa, for your leadership as chair of the Bureau and for the positive, enabling environment you created for the negotiations this week. Pretoria's envoy also remains chair for the 67th session of CSW. There is no question that during this two-week session it became clear that the UN's development agenda is often easily overshadowed by the geopolitical concerns of the day. This year's CSW session simply did not generate the levels of media interest one would expect of such a key peg in the world's sustainability architecture. As the focus now shifts to next year's theme, innovation and technological change and education in the digital age for achieving gender equality and the empowerment of all women and girls. Sherman Bryceby's SABC News, New York. Let's update you now. Russia's Foreign Affairs Minister Sergei Lavrov says President Vladimir Putin will only meet once sides are closer on key issues. Peace talks are taking place to try and end the Ukraine-Russia conflict.